I guess the art of sawing is knowing knowing your saw and uh, knowing how fast to move the carriage and how fast the carriage speed ought to be because that all determines how many teeth, how much the teeth are digging into the wood and cutting because if you cut too fast, you're putting more wood between each tooth and putting more pressure on it and it has to work harder and then your blade can heat up it can cause the saw to bind and warp and it works, overworks your motor. If you cut too slow, then you're just wasting time and that can also be bad because then you get really slow and hot in the cut and you're building more friction up over time so you gotta find that sweet spot and it kind of just takes practice so that'll get us started we'll start sawing out that boat everything's good make sure my track's nice and clear look clear i think we're all right so after you connect to the diesel engine, there's a main pulley called PTO power takeoff. You engage it, it turns the big, that six V belt band that turns the main mandrel, that turns the saw. And all your power is derived from that main mandrel. So you got a bunch of different belts hooked into it and they're hooked in a couple different ways so you can do a couple different things. The main thing is to be able to drive the carriage into the saw. It's hooked to a lever system that's hooked and brought up and then on a stick that I can control pushing and pulling. So when you pull on it, it pushes a lever that pulls the belts in such a way to make them tight around the man joint and spin it well i don't know if clockwise or counterclockwise but in such a way that it turns a big drum where a cable's connected to the carriage and it pulls it into the saw and then when you get to the end of the cut you push it it takes the tension off that belt so it quits turning the drum that way and engages other belts to turn the drum the opposite way and it brings the carriage back really ingenious it's translated across the axle down to this big cable drum here and this cable drum has a system of pulleys with cables on it. It's very ingenious. Somebody was really thinking because it runs in such a way that it goes down to this pulley and then connects to uh, another pulley back here and then finally connects here on the carriage. So when it turns through those pulleys, it derives enough power to pull this carriage into the saw. So to go when you're, you know, sawing, I guess there's many ways to do it, but the way I like to do it is, so you start off with a log like this on the carriage, and you're mostly trying to get a nice flat area to work with first. So you get up there any way you can, but most people put the bend out, pointing away from the saw and cut that out first. But the goal is to get a nice flat area. So the saw will cut like this. So if it was sitting up there, it's gonna cut this edge off and it'll give you a nice flat edge. And then you can roll it to get that flat edge down, which I have a piece to show that, but I don't. But you get that flat edge down and you got a nice base to work on and then you just keep working to square it up and the whole time you're trying to get into a nice square cant is what they call it when you take your saw in each time you're making nice boards that you can or you've already specified the width that they're going to be so if this was on the deck right now it would be a six inch board that comes off because your saw would move in increments like this so then you can cut anywhere from you know paper thin to a half inch to three quarters of an inch inch board you can cut a two inch board or you can you know right on up and then you know it's going to be whatever thickness you cut it by six inches by however long the cant is so that's the goal and that's why we just keep spinning it on the log carriage there just keep working it down until you're ending up and when you get good if you know how your how your set works are set up and you you keep an eye on your ruler when you get to the very end it'll be what you want at the end so you keep cutting and then you get to the end you don't have to make that last cut it'll be an inch or two inch or whatever you wanted to leave it and then you just run the carriage on through and take that board off and you have that extra board to work with and then uh yeah you bring your carriage back and load another one up and get back on it Hey, 
So what they don't tell you is when, when you get a sawmill, they don't tell you the cost associated with hitting stuff in the logs. Uh, I guess most big fancy places probably run their their logs through metal detectors and whatnot. And a lot of people select logs that don't come out of people's yards because every tree that comes out of the yard, don't matter who they are, where they are, everybody drives nails in their trees as high as they can reach. So most people don't take logs out of yards. I take whatever I can get. So I always inevitably out of every outing, I always run into a nail and you might as well kiss those five, six or however many teeth it affects because when they, those teeth are such a fine point on them, they hit the nail and inevitably breaks them or chips them or knocks the corner off and then you got to file them flush and you lose all those filings because each one of those teeth you can file several times. But yeah, you know it when you hit a nail because it's, uh, it's terrifying. It sounds really loud, shoots sparks everywhere, sounds like it's going to fly off and uh, kill somebody. And it might. We'll find out. Now we got an eight inch camp. There's eight, eight. So now we turn it over one more time. Everything we cut off will be an eight inch board. We're trying to make two by eight. but you got to keep it nice and clear like if you're trying to be too conservative and cutting cutting trying to get the most out of the logs you end up with little short pieces like that which can fall down in there so you got to keep it clean otherwise it'll bog down your saw the thing the next thing you need to do is i'm going to work on is putting a platform here so that stuff can't fall down in, the, in there and hit my mandrel and all that so it'll stay up there nice and neat oh we're about ready off the mandrel too so you turn this big flywheel which keeps your momentum up because when you get into a cut and you're cutting into a big 20 inch log or whatever and you, it takes a lot of force to do that so that flywheel really helps keep it nice and stable and it's connected to the mandrel here and you can see this pulley is also connected and so we can also get some power off this end and run it up and through a twist we can turn it from this motion to this motion and turn this gear which through these gears can turn this chain which has these paddles I welded onto it and uh, yeah it just keeps moving it's pretty cool because when I first started I had seen this done in a couple different places and other videos and a couple different farm shows and the old man that had this gun before me had devised this but it was missing some parts and it was missing the chain and uh, this pulley was the wrong size uh, so I redid it and when I first had it done it, the chain was actually just sitting on the ground and over the last couple years just dug that trench there so all the sawdust funnels down into that trench and it keeps that trench nice and clean anyways back to the dust chain it comes up this and actually pretty well that right there's just sitting on the ground and over time it pulls up enough dirt to get to that lip and then it'll start pushing it up there and some 
you know don't always make it back up there but over time it just keeps working and it'll, it'll pull dust right up that little chute which is movable and you can put it right into the back of whatever you want to right now i'm using the dump truck because it works really well to load that up and then i can just go dump it wherever i need it put it in dog pens you can put it into the round pen for the horse uh, if this was more of a production you could sell it people will put it in stables or whatnot so in addition to all the you know lumber you can get to do all sorts of crazy projects you also get this pretty cool wood chips which can be used for all sorts of things. It smells really nice, it's really addicting once you smell that smell. You just wanna keep sawing, even though you don't need to. I got lumber piled up everywhere, just keep sawing. Just keep getting. And that's how it's done. In the most dangerous way possible. <laughs>